we want to continue doing our linear regression example, but first I should point out, I figured out why the plotting was so weird. Turns out that in the parse here, uh, I had DDMM instead of MMDD. So my dates were coming out a little bit messed up there, which was quantizing things. Once I uh, fix that, we get a plot that looks like this. So this is all of the temperature values that are in the cluster uh, numbered 441. Um, and we still get this sinusoidal shape, just now we have a lot more detail, especially on, on the x-axis there. And so what I want to do is I actually want to fit a sinusoid through here and, and then plot it over the top so we can see it. And my goal is really to get the magnitude of variation between summer and winter, uh, because I think that would be a helpful thing in trying to cluster and classify uh, based upon, uh, I guess, climate zones. Okay, so the general idea for linear regression is that you have some value, we'll call it y, that you want to predict as a linear combination of other values. So for example, it would be, I could do an a times x1 plus a b times x2 plus c times x3, where the x1, x2, and x3 are data values that we have, and a, b, and c are constants that we're trying to figure out. And so we want to figure out which values of these coefficients give us the best fit for y across a whole bunch of data points. You know, we're not going to get a nice curve that goes through all of those data points they had. In fact, we wouldn't want to because that varies from year to year. But the variability, if you just take a single uh, sine wave and fit it through there, should be very similar. Now. What makes this a little bit more challenging is it's very easy to see how this works if I'm doing linear functions. But in this case, I want a sine wave. And so instead of just fitting the x1 and x2, what I'm going to use for my values of x1 and x2 are the sine of the day of year and the cosine of the day of, of the year. Turns out that a linear combination of these basically moves where the maxima and minima uh, are. And then the this squared plus this squared, the square root of that, will be the total magnitude of uh, the amplitude for our wave. In order to do this, I'm going to add two more dot width columns here. So with column one of them I am going to call uh, DOY sine and it is going to be equal to the sine function which is up in functions of uh, operating on the DOY which we've added here but I need to scale it so instead of going from 0 to 365, or I guess 1 to 365, I want this to go from roughly 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to take the day of year, I'm going to divide it by 365, and then I'm going to multiply it by 2 times math dot pi. Okay, so this gives me an extra column that is the sine that we can use for our linear regression, dot Another one, I want to have DOI cos, and it will be using the cosine function of the same value. So that gives us the stuff that we need in order to do our linear regression here. Now we actually need to work on linear regression. Remember when we did our clustering, I had to use a vector assembler in order to get the values that I was going to use for the clustering into a single vector. Turns out we have to do exactly the same thing here for our linear regression, so I need to assemble these values. And I'm actually, in this case, I'm going to do it, I don't want to introduce too many additional variables. Um, so I am going to 
uh, create my, I'll just call it my linear regression data. And that will be the product of a vector assembler. So I'm going to make a vector assembler and the input columns for this will be DOI sine and DOI cosine. The output column for this, uh, we could call it kind of whatever we wanted, um, but I'm just going to call it DOI trig because it is a single column that has both of our trig functions inside of it. Um, and then I want to take that and I want to use it to transform our with DOI info from have to match capitalization from earlier. And by transforming that, I can get out the full thing that I want to feed into my linear regression. I'm going to go ahead and cache this before I pass it into the linear regression. And similar to the clustering, I am going to build a linear regression model that comes from taking a linear regression. Uh, actually, first, before the model, let's just go ahead and build our linear regression. So I'm going to make a new linear regression from Spark ML regression. And I need to set some of the things on here. So the features that we are trying to fit are the ones that are in our DOI trig, that column with the vector that we just assembled here. Um, the value that I'm trying to fit in this, so the what Spark calls the label column is value because our table is down to only T maxes. So all of the values are uh, maximum temperatures. There are some other things that we can set on a linear regression. So for example, I am going to set the max iterations to be 10 on this. Uh, and I'm also as I did in a few videos ago with the clustering, I'm going to set the prediction column so we get something with a nice name. And I am going to call it P max temp, P for prediction. There are some other things that we could set on here that I'm actually not going to. And as a result, we're actually going to get a warning on this. So for example, I am not going to set the uh, regularization parameter. The regular regularization parameter is used to prevent you from overfitting. Now, if you had a lot of columns that you were working with, so if, if I had you know A, B, C, D, E, if I had a lot of terms that I was fitting, I or if I was doing a high order polynomial, which might be where you have a lot of terms, there are various things that I could do that might cause me to overfit and I'd create a curve that has too many wiggles in it or whatnot. It turns out that because I'm only using the sine and the cosine, in this case, I don't need to do that. And uh, from playing with this, I can tell you it is much, much, much faster without that. We will get a warning. It will give us a warning that says, hey, you might be overfitting, uh, but we know that, that we're not. OK, so that sets up our linear regression. We can make the model by taking the linear regression and fitting it on our linear regression data. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to finish just by taking that and printing out some values from it. So the linear reg model has coefficients in it. These are the values of, in our case, just A and B, because we only have two things in our vector that we put together. But I'm also going to print out, uh, turns out 
this is really plus c. Because unless you tell it otherwise, the linear regression allows there to be a non-zero intercept. Uh, so I have a non-zero intercept in this linear reg model dot, we can see what the intercept is. Okay, so if I go ahead and I run this, we will get to see a printout of what those values are, and then we can try to take that and add it into our plot to see if it actually looks like it's a good fit. Okay, so here we go. We have some values here. You can see that our coefficients for the sine, it is minus 17. For the cosine, it's minus 72. And we have an in intercept of uh, 282. Now this intercept should be the average value. And so we can do a quick sanity check on this. As soon as the plot comes up, we can look at it and make sure that kind of the average value for all of our data points is around 282. And here we go, sure enough, that looks like 282 would be a line right about through here. That seems like a fairly good average. Uh, while there are more data points that are much lower in here, the density of points above it, so that seems like a reasonable uh, value. And that's really kind of what we just wanted to do here. We want a sanity check to make sure that our fit is okay. So we need to come back and I wanna plot the curve for what that fit looks like over the top of that which is more than just a sanity check. It shows us that we've actually done a good job with our uh, regression.